On December 1st, 2016, developer Phoenix Labs announced the free-to-play Dauntless, which was, and let's not overcomplicate things here, free-to-play Monster Hunter on the PC. Everyone was quite excited about this because there are a lot of Monster Hunter fans in the world and a lot of them would be keen to finally play a Monster Hunter game on the PC. Things were looking very bright for Phoenix Labs. Fast forward to June 12, 2016 at E3 with my brother and I sitting right there in the crowd, Capcom unveil Monster Hunter World, the most ambitious Monster Hunter title yet built specifically for the PS4, Xbox One and PC. Rip Dauntless, we hardly knew ye. The internet immediately began eulogizing Dauntless before it even been released. No way in hell could this little free-to-play PC game hope to compete with the juggernaut that is Monster Hunter World. Too bad, so sad, see you later Phoenix Labs, you guys are done. But this approach fundamentally misunderstands the nature of video game genres and free-to-play games. See, there's definitely such a thing as genre saturation, and I think we're very soon gonna get there with something like the Battle Royale genre, which has at least 10 to 12 games either out or in development at the moment, and with games like PUBG and Fortnite already having 40 million players each, there's not going to be a lot of room left in that genre because, you know, it's going to get pretty damn crowded. The Monster Hunter genre isn't like this. It's pretty much only Monster Hunter, really. I mean, sure, there's God Eater and Tukadan and a few others, but it's really all about Monster Hunter at this point, and that means that there's some space in the market for a competitor, since people are generally willing to give games a go if they're similar to the things that they like. The other factor is the whole free-to-play business model thing. Now, most of you watching this video fall into the core gamer category, and that is people who spend a lot of money playing games, a lot of time playing games, they really care about it, they don't mind splashing some cash on video games. But there's a whole other category of people out there who don't spend money on video games, either because they aren't in a position to, or because they don't want to. And the free-to-play market exists in large part because of the demand created by this sort of gamer. It's not small either, free-to-play games are some of the most played games in the world. I mean, look at League of Legends, and Dota, and Warframe, and Path of Exile, and Fortnite, and Team Fortress Classic, and Paladins, and Hearthstone, and Heroes of the Storm, and I could go on and on and on, but I won't. When you make a game free, you access an entirely different segment of the market. One that can lead to a huge amount of success if you tap it right, and clearly Dauntless is banking on this market as one of the foundations of its success. But there's a third reason not to count Dauntless out so early, and that's that a whole bunch of Westerners now know about Monster Hunter, where they didn't know before, and they love it. And by the time Dauntless is released later this year, they just might be bored of Monster Hunter and be ready for the next thing. Now, I'm not saying that Dauntless will be successful, I'm just saying don't count it out, because a lot of the things that people are using as evidence that Dauntless is dead in the water are in fact things that are going to work in its favor if Phoenix Labs are able to create a game great enough to take advantage of all of those opportunities. Which brings us to the purpose of today's video. When I reviewed Monster Hunter last week, the number one comment I got was, skill up, Rathian is a female. But the number two comment I got was, please, skill up, bro, make your introduction shorter. But the number three comment I got was, skill up, I hate you, you've made me want this game even more now, and the wait for PC release is unbearable, unsubscribed. So, PC fans, this video is for you. I've spent about 25 hours playing Dauntless this week because I wanted to give you a really detailed look at what it was all about and I wanted to be able to tell you whether or not this is the game that would scratch the Monster Hunter itch you might be feeling. So let's just answer that question first so I don't waste any of your time, something that historically has not been a strength of mine. Dauntless is not as good as Monster Hunter, that is a fact. But it's also a fact this is a game still deep in development and nothing I've seen so far leads me to think this game is bad or has the wrong foundations or can't one day become a really, really great Monster Hunter style game that can offer something different from the core Monster Hunter franchise. The game will not yet scratch your Monster Hunter itch, but there's a lot that's traveling in the right direction. And a big part of the reason that I'm making this video today is because I want to shine a spotlight on a game and a development team that is clearly putting in the work to develop a worthwhile Monster Hunter experience. And I ask you to please remember this good intention because I'm really going to break this game down as I talk about it and a lot of what I'm going to say is going to be critical. I do that so that you, the viewer, know as much about the title as possible so that you're able to decide whether or not it's for you, but also to provide feedback to the dev team who are doing heavy construction on the 
game every update to make it better and better. What criticism I do offer, I offer in the hope that it helps rather than hurts. So let's get started, shall we? Dauntless is currently in closed beta and it's a real beta, by the way. It's not one of those bullshit marketing betas where they just push it out the door and they don't make any changes and there you go, it's sold. It's not like that. They're actually doing a lot of work on the game every update. So be aware that this beta is for realsies. You can buy into the beta for as little as 40 US dollars, but I'd only recommend doing that if you're someone that cares about this developer and this game and wants to give it the best chance of success because it's not worth $40 just yet, as I'll explain throughout the course of this video. I'll also say that most of the people who are in the beta at this point are in there because they got free codes from the developer, from signing up, from community events, from watching people on stream, from all that sort of stuff. So if you're really keen to get your hands on a code, then you're gonna be able to do it. You don't need to pay 40 bucks just you know check out the scene connect with the community and eventually you'll get in now things like bugs and lag and glitches and control support issues and ui placeholders and all that are rife within this game at the time of recording but i could not care less that's exactly what beaters are for and we're nowhere near the point where we should be complaining about that stuff yet the basic gameplay loop however is in place so we can certainly talk about that it's a monster hunting game or a slayer game as the developers have taken to calling the genre and the premise is as simple as it is in monster hunter kill monsters get items for doing so craft items to make you stronger kill stronger monsters rinse and repeat dauntless makes no effort to evolve this formula at least not yet and i'd say that for any pc players wanting to try out the monster hunter format to see if it might be for them then dauntless will at least give you a taste of that there are currently 15 monsters or behemoths as they're called in this game in the game right now uh, and there's a few variants of those as well where monster hunter world has 31 on its current roster so already from that you can get a sense of where Dauntless is at from a size perspective. The developers have made very clear that there are more monsters on the way though so it's unclear how many we can expect when the game launches. Oh and by the way no launch date is set but I've been told by the development team that they expect it to be launched early this year which means that it's sort of I guess going to be in the next three to four months. Keep that in mind. Okay, so let's talk about these 15 monsters. I fought eight of them and it took me about 20 hours to get to the point where I was able to do this since you unlock monsters in tiers as you level up and I was able to unlock tier three at the time of recording. I've also taken the time to watch YouTube videos for all of the other remaining fights, which isn't obviously the same as having completed them. Absolutely not. But it does give a clear sense of what the mechanics are like at the end game monsters. And I can tell you they're very similar to what you see at the lower level. They just happen faster and they hit harder. And this point about monster mechanics is so critical here because this is one of the two biggest differences between Monster Hunter World and Dauntless, the behavior of the monsters. In my review of Monster Hunter, one of the things I praised was the monsters actually felt like monsters. They have this authentic fluidity to their movement that makes them feel so alive. They have this spontaneity to them that makes them seem so intelligent. And they have this relentless ferocity to them that makes it feel like you can never let your guard down. Dauntless is very, very different. Dauntless monsters don't really feel alive. They feel like video game bosses. Their behavior is highly scripted, extremely predictable, and very easily cheesed. The best way to describe it is to say that fighting Dauntless bosses feels like fighting Onyxia in World of Warcraft. Oni, also a female by the way, has very scripted attack patterns. Swipe, towel swipe, lava floor, bombing run, eggs hatch, fear, more dots, more dots. More dots, more dots. Okay, stop dots. There was always a really specific place to stand in that fight as well, depending on what you were doing. And that's the case in most WoW boss fights, in fact. And if you stood there, you were generally pretty safe throughout the entire encounter. Well, it's almost identical here in Dauntless. You'll struggle the first few times you go up against a new monster, but eventually you'll not only learn its attack patterns, but you'll learn how to bait them into those so you can essentially cheese the bosses. I got to the point with most encounters where I could solo them without even being hit since I could confidently predict everything coming at me. And that really hurts an experience like this. I'm sure a lot of people in the comments will argue that the same pattern recognition is possible in Monster Hunter and it is to an extent, but I played three Monster Hunter games now and I can tell you it's much worse here. As I watch the game continue to develop, this is really the number one thing I'll be watching because this will be the hardest nut for the team to crack, but also the thing that I think will define the success of the game in the long term. 
I was getting bored of the encounters, not because I had to do them so many times, but because each time I did them, they were so predictable. And that's a real deal breaker here, especially given how much Monster Hunter World manages to nail this. Another big difference is the environments. Now, Monster Hunter World manages to create these huge, multi-layered, living, breathing worlds, teeming with plant life and critters and secrets to explore. Dauntless has three maps, as far as I can tell. You've got your Elwyn Forest, you've got your Cool Cool Mountain, you've got your Lion King map, and they're just sort of blank, flat canvases. Now, is this a step down from Monster Hunter? Sure, in many respects, yes, but at the same time, I don't really think it hurts the experience that much. For me, the combat and the gear grind loops are at the heart and soul of a game like this, with the environment being the icing on the cake. Monster Hunter World manages to weave environments and combat together in brilliant ways, but I suspect I would have loved Monster Hunter just as much if those features didn't make it in. My point is, the map design here in Dauntless isn't nearly as ambitious as it is in Monster Hunter World, but it's fine and it's unlikely to be the determining factor when it comes to whether or not you're going to enjoy this game. So if that doesn't matter too much, then what does matter? Well, the gear grind matters since for players like myself, this is the thing that keeps me coming back for weeks and months. And I'm pleased to say that I think Dauntless is certainly headed in the right direction here. In my view, there are three components to gear in any game. There's function, there's aesthetic and there's stats. And I think that Dauntless is doing well in two out of the three of these areas. First up, function. There are five weapons in the game and and they're pretty fun. They don't have quite the same mechanical depth and complexity that Monster Hunter weapons do, but they're really trying some new shit here and it's awesome. They have a bow staff which wounds the enemy, allowing other players to deal more damage if they strike the same spot. Their great hammer is literally rocket powered and you're able to rocket jump and fire off explosives and use it to power your swings for greater damage. It's really awesome. And they even have these chain axes similar to Kratos from God of War where you can do these huge ranged combos and then pull yourself close to the enemy for more up close damage. There's real work that's gone into the thinking and design here. And if this is the shape of things to come when it comes to Dauntless's weapons, then color me interested. Visually, the weapons and armor you collect are pretty nice to look at. There's a distinctive and consistent visual style running through all of it, which I actually really like. There's also the option to dye stuff and to mix it up, and it's nice. It doesn't look as awesome in inverted commas as Monster Hunter does, but I'm sure the team will get more and more ambitious with this stuff as the game evolves. I mean, you want to give yourself something to work up to if you plan to support the game for many years to come. I think the biggest challenge I'm seeing with the gear game so far is that it just isn't fun. The bonus stats on the gear are just a little bit boring. I can get a sword that does bonus damage when I hit a monster in the head or some gear that reduces the stamina cost of rolling. I mean, it's fine and it is improving my efficiency, but it just isn't that fun. The best gear games I've seen in games like Diablo or Warframe or even The Division, the gear we get unlocks completely new ways of playing and helps create these unique gameplay stories that come from playing your build in your way. And that doesn't exist here. And that's a little worrying for me since this is the big and this is the time when you can be the most crazy with your design choices. Personally, I'd take the stats gain that they've got and dial it up to 11. Let crazy, unbelievably fun build power and diversity become the hallmark for which this game is known, because while Monster Hunter does a good job here, it doesn't go far enough in my view. I think there's an opportunity here for Phoenix Labs to go nuts with this, and I certainly hope they do so. Structurally, the game doesn't yet have a proper campaign or an end game in place, but the devs have said that the end game is a priority for the team this year. They point to things like daily and weekly quests as possibilities, but it will be interesting to see where they take this given that it is a free to play game and they're very reliant on monetizing end game players if they're going to survive. Speaking of monetization, let's talk about that. Phoenix Labs seems to be hell bent on not screwing over the player base and that's pretty damn rad if you ask me. Last year they announced that they would be removing loot boxes from their game because they felt they weren't right and they proudly declared that Dauntless will always be a game of skill, not a test of your credit card limit. The game monetizes through potions and consumables, which are actually pretty easily obtained for free though through gathering, and also through cosmetics like dyes, for example. To be honest, I can't really see this working in the long term. It feels like this stuff just isn't going to get enough people spending, so I'll definitely be keeping an eye out for this as I'm sure developers will be doing more work in this space. If I was to characterize my overall feelings about Dauntless at this point, I'd say that its biggest challenge is its linearity and predictability, and that's in all parts of the game. The environments are always the same and do not create unexpected moments of excitement, though that is not a deal breaker. 
The enemy encounter design is scripted, predictable, and easily overcome once you learn the do's and don'ts. The gear grind is linear and predictable, with a very simple material system that is reliable, but it lacks the surprise, super rare drops that can fill you with excitement or move your build along unexpectedly faster. The gear stats game provides incremental advancement rather than exciting, game-changing possibilities. The game structure also is very predictable and grind-heavy at this point, with the need to grind tiers of mobs far longer than you would otherwise want to, simply to gain the rank to reach the new tier of enemies. So I know that all this sounds pretty rubbish and it sounds like I've just sort of said the game sucks, but I really don't think that. I actually really enjoy the game in many respects. I love the aesthetic. The weapon design is showing true promise. The enemy encounters, though predictable, have some really interesting mechanics that could be great if they were mixed together in different ways. The free-to-play model is also extremely generous and the community that seems to be emerging is extremely chatty and friendly. And honestly, I haven't had this much fun interacting with a game community since I started playing Warframe. So clearly the team are onto a very good thing here. On balance, I'm very optimistic about where Dauntless is headed. It's absolutely not there yet, but I'm very hopeful that it will get there in the end. Even at launch, this game will not be a better game than Monster Hunter World. That is just a fact. Monster Hunter has essentially been in development for 14 years, as so many of the monsters and weapons and game systems have been reused and refined from game to game. Monster Hunter World didn't just emerge suddenly, it got there after a very long time. And so did Warframe and Path of Exile and heaps of other games that launched with more limited horizons, only to eventually meet and smash through them as the development team continue to work hard and improve the game on the back of a supportive community. My hope is that Dauntless meets the same success because based on my time with it, it certainly seems like it deserves to. Hey guys, little postscript after the review here. I now have a proper setup because I moved house, which means that I can actually like talk to you now and it won't be awful because I was in my lounge room, my other place, and that really sucked. Anyway, that's a boring story. Wanted to let you know that I got a whole boatload of uh, Dauntless beta keys. The developer reached out to me when they knew I was making this review and they said, take these and give them away to people. I'm going to be giving them away on the channel. They're going to be going to patrons first and also to sponsors. You'll notice there's an, actually a new button down next to my subscribe button. I'm part of a beta program within YouTube that allows you to sponsor my channel, like on Twitch, uh, basically supporting what I do and you get some benefits in return. You can check that out below. I'm going to be reaching out to patrons and sponsors first to make sure you guys get a beta key. Everybody else, just leave a comment below asking for a key and I will literally manually respond to it with your code. I know some people will get their codes poached. I know that will happen. If that happens to you, make a new comment asking for another one because uh, yes, I'll just keep going through until I've used up all my codes. Um, do not reply to an existing comment because I won't see the replies. That's not how my notifications work. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed the review. I really enjoyed making it. I really wish all the best to Phoenix Labs. I hope they have a hugely successful launch and the game goes on to great, great, great heights. Uh, for now, thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.